Um, so I'll stop where I recognize a new question that uh, that I think have uh, substantial enough uh, content that I should address. So we did that. Uh, let me see. So, okay. This may or may not be new. I actually don't remember. <laughs> but in any case, it's a multiple choice. Uh, so it serves mostly as a reading chat question. I think um, people will do fine. Oh, yeah, there's a whole thing about the magnetic North Pole or the North Magnetic Pole. I think when I was writing up this question and, and when I was putting up the textbook, I searched around it. <laughs> There are a bunch of different conventions, which is I'm saying here for the purpose of this class, North magnetic pole of Earth will always mean a spot on Earth that behaves like the north end of a bar magnet. Um, oh, so I think that means actually North magnetic pole of Earth should be located at the south end, uh, south to geographical pole of Earth. Uh, and I, I say that without meaning to imply that that's the only way people are going to use that particular phrase. So, <laughs> but that's multiple choice. You can read the book and kind of answer it on your own. And this is the same deal, um, same deal here. Ah, feral magnets are the questions that I've added uh, because I think when I was, uh, um, you know, uh, doing a periodic review of my course materials, I realized, hey, ferromagnetism is uh, it's significant and I don't have any questions asking about that. So this is one of the new questions that I've added since last time I've done uh, chapter 11 homework questions. So let's uh, go through this uh, multiple answer question and uh, make sure everything is addressed. And um, as usual, <laughs> review the hint and most of the times hint will say, look at the textbook section and they are meant to be helpful it's because it's linking you to the ferromagnetic a ferromagnet section because the question is about ferromagnets. So, okay, uh, so let's uh, go through it. So I'm gonna go through it kind of assuming that you've read the section. So I won't uh, necessarily look up each paragraph that I'm citing to answer once I'll just work off of my memory. Okay, so it says ferromagnets are made of materials which form magnetic domain is a phrase that you should have seen in the section and Macroscopic regions, yeah, I guess they can be macroscopic, like you know, sizes of millimeters and centimeters, regions where the magnetic poles of individual atoms are aligned. Okay, that seems right to me, so let me check it. Sometimes I put tricky choices. I'm trying to see if I put in anything. I... It seems like a fair description of magnetic domain. So I'll go with that. <laughs> a source of energy is needed to power the magnetic fields generated by the ferromagnets. I think if you think through it, you can see that the answer is obvious no, because um, ferromagnets, like your fridge magnets, it's not, uh, it, you know, it doesn't have a battery in it. So where's the energy coming from? So it, you have plenty of examples in your life that you can point to say, and oh, hey, this thing doesn't require a source of energy to for it to operate the way we want it to operate. Now, if it's some, yeah, if it's somehow doing mechanical work, the mechanical work would uh, require some source of energy, but not to maintain the magnetic field, which is apparently just done, is there. Ferromagnets are pieces of Earth's magnetic core. Yeah, I can see that I'm making stuff up here. So this is <laughs> not correct. But for what it's worth, if you've studied uh, geology, Earth's core consists of uh, liquid uh, outer core and solid uh, inner core. And they are actually made up of ferromagnetic elements, iron and nickel but uh, they don't break off, especially the outer core, which is uh, liquid anyway. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, I'm just making stuff up here. Okay, ferromagnets contain an imbalance of magnetic poles, more North poles than South poles. Yeah, um, not true for really two reasons. Um, I guess uh, here I'm trying to describe something that maybe looks like a description of a static electric charge. Like when something carries a static electric 
uh, net electric charge, it does uh, contain an imbalance of electric charges. But as you ha have read in the chapter, one of the things, ways in which magnetism is different from electricity is that magnetic monopoles don't exist. Um, magnetism, magnetic poles only exist in dipole configuration. Wherever there's North Pole, there's also South Pole. Um, the search for magnetic monopole is actually an interesting topic and the kind of short version of that is um, um, they've never been uh, reproducibly found. So, so this whole thing is just nonsense, so it's not correct. <laughs> okay, hard blows or hitting the ferromagnets may demagnetize them reducing their ability to produce magnetic fields. Uh, I think this is actually mentioned in the textbook. It's not something uh, you do just to simply guess on your own. So let me, <laughs> I guess I said I wouldn't do this, but let me go to the section and actually show you where in the textbook it actually addresses um, things that can affect a ferromagnet. So ah, here it is. Um, well, hidden tapping. That actually, I think, uh, relates to the other thing. So uh, wait. Um, one second. Ah, here it is. Conversely, a permanent magnet can be demagnetized by hard blows or by hitting it in the presence of, in the absence of another magnet. Um, so I guess uh, the, the um, conceptual way to understand it is, um, so this uh, magnetization process, which is actually addressed in the next item, ferromagnets can be produced by hard blows or hitting certain materials materials that exhibit ferromagnetism in a strong magnetic field. Um, so, and uh, well, a question came up, you know, aren't these two things are saying opposite things and how can both of them be correct at the same time? And the key thing that's important to hear is that in this choice here, it, it's talking about when something is, um, these things are happening to it while it is in a strong magnetic field. So when you look at this picture, you can look at it as what heating and tapping the ferromagnetic material is doing is it's, uh, it's disturbing those magnetic domains. It's uh, allowing the magnetic domains to realign. So as the magnetic domains are uh, getting unstuck and be able to be realigned, if you set up a situation that there's a strong external magnetic field, that's tending to orient the domains in a particular direction. You know, uh, one south pole attracts the north pole, north pole attracts the south pole. Then, um, then under that uh, high temperature and mechanical disturbance, the magnetic domains would get aligned this way. And if they're allowed to cool down while they are aligned this way, this alignment will stick and that will produce the, the ferromagnet. Now, uh, that has this orientation in the, even in the absence of the other magnet. Now, if you're doing this heating and tapping and you are not applying any external magnetic field, I don't think I have any picture of that, but you know, just to imagine um, doing the heating and tapping and not applying any, not providing any guidance, not uh, telling magnetic domains what, which way to be aligned then um, they are gonna get aligned in a random direction, each one of them. And when they are all aligned in a random direction, they can easily add up to net, negative, uh, net zero magnetization. So that would be a uh, ferromagnet getting demagnetized. So in con yeah, so, so that, <laughs> um, those are the correct choices, ones that I see. Let me submit and make sure. Hopefully, so, yeah, I didn't miss anything. Okay, let's look at, uh, there should be at least two more new questions. Let's see here. Oh, yeah. To solve physical objects which, below which produces magnetic fields. I feel like this is probably new. So, um, yeah, it's still about ferromagnets. <laughs> so, um, so, so let me go through each one and 
just to, uh, I, I will give a brief explanation as I'm going through them. Uh, stainless steel part, I want to say no. Um, I mean, it's a ferromagnetic, but unless you magnetize it, it doesn't on its own produce magnetic field and usually steel parts are not this, uh, manufactured magnetized. Copper part, it's not even uh, ferromagnetic. So uh, unless you pass on oh, electric current <laughs> through the copper part, it's not gonna produce magnetic field. Um, a stationary electric charge um, does not produce magnetic field. Oh, and I checked on electric current as something that produces magnetic field uh, <laughs> because it's uh, addressed in the textbook. Um, it's addressed here and I think C figure seven. Um, I hope that's uh, referring to, uh, yeah, uh, the current is the source of all magnetism. And that's uh, kind of addressed in a later section. But for the purpose of, uh, you know, uh, yeah, magnetic fields produced by currents. But, but for the question, uh, purpose of this uh, multiple answer question, all you have to know is that an electric current can produce magnetic field. Stationary electric charge does not. It produces electric fields, but not magnetic fields. The difference between these two are, is that this is a stationary charge and this is a moving electric charge. A magnetic charge, if it existed, it would produce magnetic field, but it does not exist. That's kind of what I was talking about with a, a magnetic monopole. So since magnetic monopoles don't exist, I don't think I should check this. It's like, you know, if a unicorn was one of the choices, I wouldn't check it because unicorns, as far as we know, don't exist. Um, okay, a moving electric charge, that's basically the same thing as an electric current from the microscopic point of view. A loop of copper wire, unless it's carrying a current, it's not producing magnetic field. A single electron, and uh, this is a tough one. Um, it should be, yes, a single electron produces magnetic field. Um, I wonder if the textbook actually gives that explanation. I hope it does. Um, yeah, atoms and small magnets. Aha, uh -huh, here it is. Um, Electrons have spin and can be crudely pictured as a rotating charge. Crudely meaning not really, but at least in some sense, yes. Um, so yeah, electron has a, something called the magnetic dipole moment. And that uh, electron, a single electron, stationary electron behaves like a, a tiny dipole magnet. So yeah, a single electron does produce magnetic field. Um, a, a microscopic, very small magnetic field that if it was just one electron, it'll be very hard to detect kind of way. Uh, magnetized iron bar, yeah, that's your typical permanent magnet. Well, maybe not typical, it's a possible permanent magnet. Um, a single atom also produces magnetic field. Um, I think the textbook actually describes it, yeah, here, A, in the planetary model of the atom, which isn't 100% correct, but it's uh, correct enough in that the electron, uh, your, there's a current you can associate with it, and that ends up producing magnetic field. Um, so yeah, uh, I see a question, let's see, let me just read it out loud. Is there a differentiation between an electric current and a moving electric charge? Um, is the former flow of electrons the latter as a moving group? Um, at our level, there isn't a big difference. Um, in the practical sense, where it, there could be a difference is, is if you're talking about uh, if you're talking about stable or um, state. Well, if you're talking about a magnetic field that's not varying in time then you do need an electric current that's a constant over time. Um, if you had a single charge that's moving, then you couldn't have a constant current. So 
Um, so a lot of the magnetism we describe in this section is what we sometimes call magnetostatics, as in magnetism involving magnetic fields that are not changing in time. And in order to have that static magnetic field, uh, you need a steady current. And uh, you could uh, characterize a steady current as a collection group of charges that are moving in such a way that you can look at it, any portion of the current and they look kind of the same. Um, yeah, but if, if you had a single charge that's moving, uh, one way in which that would be different is that it would not result in uh, the stat magnetostatic arrangement. So, so at conceptual level, not that much of a difference. I guess maybe one biggest thing is when we describe electric current, uh, we describe the direction of current, kind of imagining that it's the direction of a hypothetical positive charge that's moving in the direction of current. I, I think this was addressed in chapter 10 material last week, so yeah.